Hey everybody, it's another episode of The Pantry Party Show with your host at DJ Blattner. Today's guest is at Lara Field. She's an expert in child nutrition and celiac disease and she runs a wonderful private practice. Cannot wait to have her on. Let's give it just a little bit more time so you can admire that Pantry Party Show sign. All right, The Pantry Party Show is about to begin right now. Hey everybody. Another great week of the Pantry Party show is all scheduled for you. And just as a reminder, the Pantry Party, the whole idea is we're going to the store less. We are cooking a whole lot more. And we keep opening up our pantry and seeing the same things. <laughs> so this show is supposed to be inspiration for all of our home cooking. So I've been having guest after guest after guest. And all of the past episodes are on my IGTV. So in case you are looking for uh, some inspiration... Uh, you can always go there. So today we have at Lara Field. Let's have her inspiration. I know I could use it. Oh, oh, and get ready. Oh, hey. Oh. I, almost forgot my, uh, I almost forgot my whole disco ball situation. Warm I pushed go. Warm welcome. How are you, Lara? Hi, how are you? Very good. I was deciding what to wear today, and I was like, I'm going to wear gold, because I always feel like you have a touch of, like, a gold, uh, golden suntan all the time. So I was like... I was, I was, I did the same, Dawn. I, I felt like a little, like, leopard, you know, a little print. It was good for my girl, Dawn. <laughs> That's, thank you very much. Well, and you know, what's happened since, I mean, we've known each other for years and years and years. Um, and now I would say about 40% of people really do call me DJ these days so I mean you know you know your old school when it's like totally Who? totally who's, who's Dawn <laughs> exactly it's like uh you my mother that's about it <laughs> I will um, I will address you appropriately and with your new name oh god in the I future love <laughs> I love you hey you know what um when I was reading through things and I was like looking at your Instagram you, your private practice is really thriving. You have a yeah. lot of dietitians working. Feed Nutrition has been around. I mean, I refer people all the time, particularly with kids. Thank you. Or celiac to you. But really, I mean, you have how many dietitians now? So we're growing, which is awesome. And we're about four or five dietitians now total, which is wow. great. And That's we're, you know, so my, thank you. My, um, you know, goal and expertise has always been in kids and families. And um, with the growing need, a lot of the parents were asking me, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I need to lose some, a little bit of weight because I just had a baby or, hey, you know, I was just diagnosed with high cholesterol or various things. We just felt like a growing need. So, um, so we have a team of five experts, um, including a chef and dietitian Sarah Haas, who was just with you last week. Uh -huh. And um, also just to, you know, fine tune those needs and have those experts be in those expert spaces. So it's great. It's super fun. And I think the biggest part, Dawn, is that I love collaborating with other dietitians like you as well. And, you know, I think that just building a brand or building um, is, is something that just about being collaborative, you know, and um, I don't know, spreading the reach and having fun too on a daily well, basis. I mean, you, you're going to get me every single time if you're going to say <laughs> having fun. I mean, everybody <laughs> knows that's a gateway to my heart. So like, that's it. Um, so do each of you sort of have your own expertise? So like when I refer people to you in particular, I'm yes. always thinking it's always going to be kids and it's always going to be celiac. Like, I, I know those are your specialties. Yep. And so each one of your dietitians that works for Feed Nutrition, and that's your handle there is at yes. Feed Nutrition. Yes, thanks. Um, they all have uh, expertise. Exactly. I mean, so Sarah is, does a lot of our meal planning and um, in-home meal prep stuff because she's a dietitian as well. Um, Tracy works with our um, diabetes and heart health and, um, uh, you know, older clients. Um, Kim has some kid experience expertise um, in addition to corporate wellness. Um, and then Sarah is a expert in uh, maternal health. So she does, um, you know, from gestational diabetes to um, help breastfeeding support and, and things like that. So it's a cool, diverse group. And, you know, we're just this virtual, we're virtual counseling all the time now. So it's a total different perspective than we're used to 
Um, but it's, 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 I think we're, we're trying to make it work, you know? Uh, well, yeah, because I know that you actually have like a office front or a storefront right. or whatever. I, you know, I've yes. seen pictures on your Instagram that, you know, you actually work like that. So have you been doing virtual clients at all? Or is this like totally new for you? No, we, it's, we actually, we've been doing virtual clients though, historically, however, you know, I, I love the connection of just being with people, you know, especially working with kids, Don, sorry, DJ, <laughs> I think, you know, kids, kids and their parents, um, it's, it's emotional, it's stressful, it's, it's, um, and all sorts of things. And, you know, having a calming influence, having a nutrition expert to kind of help massage this very scary world of parenting. Um, sometimes in person is a little bit different. Also working with teens and, you know, um, there's a lot of emotions that go on there. And so having a personal touch and being physically with them is I really miss it. But at the same point, you know, I think you probably feel the same way. This virtual world is, is we're getting comfortable in it and we're trying to make it work. And so I'm optimistic that we will continue to do it a lot in the future, but you know, I can't wait to see people in person again, <laughs> work yeah, and so otherwise. Uh, yeah, so I've always liked the virtual stuff because it's like, you know, you could always be like dressed in gold on top and have your, you know, leggings on the bottom or whatever. I love like not wasting time commuting and blah to an office, blah, blah, blah. The thing that I miss is public speaking in big groups of people. Like, totally. there's, you know, even though um, I, you know, I might do, um, you know, like over the weekend, I did like a virtual retreat and, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people there, but I couldn't see them all on Zoom. You know what I mean? And I couldn't yep. feel the energy as much. You know, you can do it a little bit in the chat box, but it's, you know, right. It's, you're right. It takes a little bit of getting used to, that's for sure. Totally. Now, two totally. things that I really, I personally always want to know is, one, your specialties of kids and of celiac, did that happen upon you by the universe, or had you had those uh, passions <laughs> It, right. you know, it's funny. It's funny. It did happen upon in the universe. Um, so when I went to grad school at Rush, I was an eager new dietitian and wanted a new job right away. And um, it, coincidentally, one of the two jobs that was available was was a position at Rush, at, excuse me, University of Chicago in the PEDS GI team. And so it was literally just, okay, sure, I'll, I'll do it, I'll be ready. And um, so I was very, I was fortunate that I really loved it. I mean, I learned from these amazing pediatric experts. Stefano Guandolini is a close friend and colleague of mine who is a celiac disease expert, a nationally, internationally renowned expert in celiac. And so I, he literally took me under his wing and I, um, I just loved it. And at that point, you know, it was almost 20 years ago, which just sounds crazy. Um, I, there wasn't as much that we, we didn't know as much about celiac disease. It was totally a, just a weird word, like who, what's celiac? And the gluten-free diet was not at all what it is now today. And so it was really a cool little specialty that I really enjoy and I still enjoy it very much. So nowadays it does, it's a little different because it's, um, there are people that have celiac disease or people that have allergies, but then there's also, you know, other people that just want to be gluten-free and want to know how to do it the right way. So it's really, it's quite, um, fun to do that, but yeah, so that's, so it just, the world's worked out. <laughs> well, and I like that you, you know, you said yes to the, the bottom line, the themes that we're saying yes to the opportunity. And if it right. ends up being something you love, you're pursuing it. Now, what totally. about being a boss babe and running a practice <laughs> of other dietitians? Is that something you had always dreamed of or did that also just like sort of have to happen? I, no, I do have to say in conversations with you, you kind of helped move me in that direction. I remember vividly a conversation we had once and you said, you got to think about what else is out there. It's not just about the hospital experience. And I was like, 
Yeah, you're right. I guess I am getting a little comfortable. No, um, I, I really always wanted to start my own practice. That was a total goal of mine. Um, and just reach others in speaking engagements or just connecting with more people, um, working for food companies, doing some consulting. I lo always love doing that. And so that was something I was able to do when I started a private practice and, you know, hiring more dietitians, it was more about expanding our reach and really having the experts that are experts in that practice versus me. I mean, I, you know, as you know, registered dietitians were trained in and all, but we, to really, you know, hone your field and do a good job at it. I do think it's so important to, you know, consider an expert for whatever you might need, you might have. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And so when it comes to like the, you know, global pandemic, uh, and yes. you have two boys of your own, so yes. you have a, you know, full business, you have a full family. I mean, is there been some like go to meals or like go to stocking yeah. strategies or anything that's really like sort of something that you feel like in terms of the pantry party yeah. inspiration <laughs> to uh, help us, you know, with our own situation of getting bored yeah. in our houses, you know? Oh, oh, totally. You know, it's funny, John. I don't ever meal plan. That is not me. I am not a planner. I'm planning this out. <laughs> I just, I do not like me. I'll say it here first. I don't like meal planning at all. It's, and okay. I do feel like it's like sacrilege because I, I'm like, you know, I, I have, have to call it like organizing as opposed to like planning. I like even that yes. word helps me a bit. Um, but like I say it all the time, right? And that it's like I am the simplest way. Like I'll I'll do some planning, but mostly just organizing a little bit. Yes. So yes. I love when I meet somebody like that is agreeing that it's like you. Uh, so how has things so, changed? Well, now? this is that this yeah. leads me to we've kind of meal planned now, and yeah. I I'm like yeah, I don't know maybe I could get used to it. I mean we so a big mantra of mine when working with kids and families is to try to get everyone on board. You know, making sure that all the family members are feeling like they have a say in the meal if they you know whether they participate in preparation or not, sure, but it's more about having everyone like be a part of it because I work with a lot of picky eaters and a lot of, you know, resistant eaters and having their buy-in is literally half the battle. If we don't have them on board, then they won't enjoy it. And so I think it's been a wonderful, like that part of quarantine has been awesome for us because I do really, we have like kind of had like a Sunday sit down and, and like put a little, my a legal pad together and nothing very fancy, but put together, you know, our, either our goals for the week in terms of like, let's make Taco Tuesday, or let's have, you know, the meatballs that have been sitting in the freezer or, um, but really having some sort of a agenda. I think that has worked. And a, a, something also that we've done is really is sit down for meals, like literally breakfast is a little hairy, but lunch and dinner for sure. And um, that's been amazing. Like that is such a, a super cool time that we never would have done previously. And so making sure that we're having like some sort of col collaboration at those points has been super fun. I like that. Okay. So how do you like, what are the buy-in tips, right? So, I mean, I'm not, uh, here's the thing. I, you know, I refer people that have kids stuff to you. <laughs> okay. <It's> like, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Just go. But I, you know, I'm a stepmother and yes. I do know about the buy-in thing. So nobody yeah. feels like a victim and yes. being forced something, but that, right. you know, and so what I've always said is that everybody gets a day and that you get to have whatever you want on your day and I make it the way I want to make it. So that's basically my, my book, Superfood Swap has come from like, you know, saying, oh, I want chick nuggets. Like, like they're going to be made my way. <laughs> yeah. Chick yep. nuggets. Yeah. Anyway. You know, so, um, so how do you do your buy-in? Like when you think about even your own family, whether it's, you know, clients or just, you know, your boys. Yeah. Yeah. I would say uh, the buy-in, when I say that to me, it means that they're, they're having a voice, you know, yeah. whether it is, I want to have like an Italian theme night or whether it's, we should make a dish with beef or um you know that part of it i think is is really 
part, half the battle. The, the kids that I work with that are picky eaters, you know, a lot of it stems from parents' expectations and kids' resistance. You know, parents might say, I was told by this dietitian that she, I should have, you know, half of my plate be veggies and a pound full of protein and a cup full of, of whole grains. But the reality is my kid doesn't like vegetables. So getting the buy-in of like, maybe we can find some veggies that this, like, you know, polling the audience to see which are, are quote unquote approved, I think makes it really just a more successful meal and less stress. And yeah. that's the, that's the key. We've got enough stress going on Please. here anyways. I mean, that's what <laughs> I, I, I really do think that that's the key is like less stress. And so that's why every, since the beginning of the year, so before pandemic, uh, Chris, my husband and I would sit down and actually do this meal organizing, right? Yes. So we do two breakfasts, two lunches, two dinners, and two snacks. Yep. That's it. That's all we like sort of plan. And then yep. we'll after that. And the reason why I'm committed to it is not because I should do it because somebody told me I should. It's like, exactly. it's shitty life, people. Shitty, shitty, <laughs> shitty life. Totally. But it's because of exactly what you just said. It decreases our freaking stress. Yes. It's like we have food in the house. We know ish what we're sort of having ish, you know, yep. and it's like, oh my God. So this is how the other half lives. Totally. <laughs> so we, we found that sort of a happy medium of like yeah. not being overly zealous planners, but right. not also totally winging it right. as we have. Yeah. And you know, another thing is we typically, I would say circulate among 50, 10 to 15 meal ideas, you know, we're, Sometimes we're a little creative and we go a little changed up. Um, but I, I think that's also the repetition is something that they love and they expect. And um, we might, you know, you, I just think that's what makes it easier. You know, a lot of time my husband and I don't have time to make this perfect meal that we would enjoy. <laughs> you know, that perfect execution of everything. But trying to, um, you know, get some sort of semblance of health and also um, something that they will enjoy is really half the, that's important too. Yeah. You know what? I like what you just said though. I mean, cause we call it delicious repeat. So we put things on delicious repeat, yep. but we have something different every single week, but we're adult palates, you know what yeah, I mean? And totally. part of our thing is that we're not planning all that much. So we do want some, a little bit of variety, right. but I like that point of if you have a family freaking favorite, lean in like right, make right. it on the regular yeah. um because people like that now here's the one thing i will say i grew up with much of like the same five things in rotation yep. all the time which don't i love my mother but i did <laughs> not enjoy like we had things like have you ever heard of ham steak no ham. I, did you have tuna noodle casserole in your house? Because oh, that's what no. I did. <laughs> oh, no. We, luckily, we did not have that. But a ham steak, I still have nightmares from that. It's like a yes. piece of ham that pretends to be a steak. I mean, you yeah. know, my mom's like, we didn't have money. I had to do what I had to do. I was like, yeah, sure, of course. I, I feel it. I feel you. Yeah. But please yeah. know that I'm still having nightmares about ham right. steak. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, and I want food to be fun and, and engaging and an education, too, for all of our kids. It's so important. And I think think that, you know, some of the repetition that we have is more like a, a cuisine. So maybe Asian or Mexican or, or what have you. And that's, I think that's some of our, our, our most successful meals too. Cause we, you know, again, we don't plan it out, but they know that's like kind of what to expect, yes. which is, yes. is cool. Uh, Lara at Lara field, I, we call that theme eating and I love theme eating. Yeah. I feel like yeah. especially uh, for vegetarians, it's, uh, it's the way to do it because you know, you're not like building a meal around a pork chop, you know, so right. what are you doing? It's like, oh, totally. it's theme eating. Well, so at, if you were going to say for the pantry party show of like, hey, yes. you know, this is something, uh, you know, and how old are your boys now? They're 12 and nine. Wow. Okay. So, you know, my 12 year old, my nine year old. Crazy. Like we, this has been like a go-to thing that we've used, you know, throughout yeah. whatever the pandemic. Is there something yeah. that has just been like a go-to fabulous thing for you? I would say a go-to is probably like something super simple and boring. Like our grill, we've been using a lot, you know, whether it's salmon or, or burgers. I mean, that's like something that is routine. I mean, I am a very big believer of the plate method, meaning we have to, I like to build or, and recommend building our meal around the veggie versus the protein. And so we have been so 
um, consistent with having a set like a huge salad every night and uh, some sort of veggie and then um, the rest is kind of I, I guess I, I would say the grill has been our, our go-to a lot um, but then that salad slash potato whole grain something you know is is the the modifier yeah you know? so if we were going to call this you know pear party i have to name every episode yes so, I so like, oh my gosh well, I have to name it so like what would you say like if you were like oh my gosh this is like i need this to be the name of this pear party well episode. i'll tell you one of my favorite things that i was going to mention that i had never used ever it's the electronic kitchen, you, you know, the kitchen electronics that I've heard so much about. I got on Prime Day last year. I, every client says, you don't have this and you should Drum get roll. one. Roll, and I was like, I am in quarantine. I'm going to use a pressure cooker. So oh I... God. I didn't know what you were going to say. I did the drum roll. I, I swore a million times over. I have every intern that I ever have, every client that I ever have is like, you don't have an air fryer? Oh my God. Yes. And I'm like, Let's oh my God. I feel, I, yeah, I don't have an air fryer because I have a small kitchen. I feel like those are also small baskets. Like yes. Like make four fries at a time. Right. I don't know, but people are so uppity about needing an air fryer. I can't even tell no. you. But no, you threw me, you threw me for a loop. I had yeah. a pressure cooker back in the day when I was like, make your own beans, like Martha yeah, Stewart right. girl. Sure. I don't know. But yeah. now I, I got rid of that thing. I was like, I don't know. Well, um, so is the pressure cooker and Instapot, are Instapot. They the same thing? They are. They are. So I most recently, yes, they are the same. And I was very scared of it. I love my, my crock pot, my slow cooker. I use that a bunch. And I was always scared of this pressure, like the, the right. pressure situation. I don't know what that, you know, what that'll well, do. Or, explode. You do know well, it's going to explode and the thing's going to yeah. whoop up. It's yeah. And I, yeah. I'm not prepared for that mess. <laughs> so, um, so I, I purchased it and I've been, uh, another thing that I've been really kind of trying to do is try new recipes, just tr kind of experiment with new things. And so this, this kitchen element, this kitchen implement, uh, utensil, electronic, whatever, um, I was really kind of, I'm going to do it. I'm going to conquer it. So most recently I made pressure cooker pozole and it was amazing. So have you ever made pozole? Okay. You know? Yes. I lived for a few years in New Mexico where pozole is big business. Like it yeah. is like yeah. wars of the pozole. <laughs> um, I love it. And we probably have it like, uh, you know, we do a lot of soups over the winter, like when we watch bears games and stuff like sure. that. So we probably have it once a winter or whatever, but I love it. Oh my gosh. That's fun so, to have it in a pressure cooker. So it was amazing. So it was, um, and it was something, you know, a big thing that, I like to make a, a one pot meal I love. I mean, that's like, that's something that also we, tries to carry us through the rest of the week. Like that's a huge uh, quarantine habit I think that we've had. Um, but I also love like a choose your own adventure meal. So this pozole was, it was chicken thighs, um, you know, hominy is, or, or is pozole, traditional for pozole, um, onions, some wonderful spices, uh, chili adobo chilies and then what and it was it just it was super easy it didn't take very long um but what was awesome about it is then you know myself my husband my kids you can kind of choose your own adventure as far as the toppings we had um like cilantro and red peppers and corn and you know some of us like sour cream some of us wanted a little lower cal some of us wanted a little more more heat so that's all like it was but has been a wonderful mexican theme night that is super simple and i'm really excited about my instabot it's super fun well that i feel like that's an inspiration i still don't know i mean i still feel nervous about extra kitchen gadgets but you're almost selling me on this whole idea <laughs> so and so i've always wanted to look that up i you know i could have looked it up on google always forget is is an instapot the same thing as the, yes so we, i believe in i believe thing. instapot i believe instapot just made it a little bit sound a little bit more fun but oh, there's well. But it is it is super fun and it is super easy and so I w I conquered my goal to you know try to 
do something different in quarantine. But it was, but what the, the benefit was, I was kind of not sure about this recipe and I wasn't sure if my kids were gonna like it and they do love, love some heat. But um, it, they just let my oldest was like, this is amazing. Can you make this more often? Oh, I'm like, that's okay, okay. That's for sure. Sure. here. If you put any effort toward a meal and everybody yeah. likes it, that's great. Uh, Kblum18 says, we love Choose Your Own Adventure here. We call it deconstructed meal. Amazing. And yeah. I think that's where you call, you know, like not being a victim of your dinner and feeling like everyone has buy-in and, totally. and feel empowered. That yeah. deconstructed stuff is huge because then yeah. you can, you know, make your own facility bowl, right. make your own taco, make your own exactly. pizza, make your own burger, we, whatever. We do, we do like a baked potato bar sometimes too, you know, have that base of a baked potato and then, you know, we can have like a array of toppings that, that anyone can kind of make it their own, which is well, super fun. Okay. I feel like I rudely want to make it baked potato bar as our theme. Yes. So, but done, fine. No, but Big potato serious. bar it is. No, I have, here's why. It's selfish, obviously. I mean, it's selfish. Because, selfish. okay, I don't have a pressure cooker slash Instapot. I do yes. love Sassoli, though, and I love to Your Own Adventure Topping. But I do have potatoes in my freaking pantry right yes. now. And yes. I've been making a ton of, like, potato wedges, and those are good. Yep. But I've been sort of like, what else can we do here, people? Yeah. And it's like, a potato bar is fun, because it could be, like, put your own shredded chicken in, or, or black yep. beans, or cheese, right. or yep. green onions. I sort of love that uh, thing. Oh That's It's a good base. It's a good, I mean, a, you know, a, ba a potato, it, make sure to include the skin, obviously, is can be a, a wonderful fiber filled, you know, and it's also approachable for kids. Many kids aren't afraid of a potato like they might be with like quinoa, for instance, or some, some whole yeah. grain sprouted tortilla, but having that potato is a familiar and then, you know, topping it as, as you wish. I think okay, it's here's my question. Okay, so I'm envisioning this. I, you know, so anyway, I love the fasole. Okay, but I'm loving this potato idea so much <laughs> for myself. What vegetable, like when you think about, because I'm like yes. you, I'm like always very vegetable obsessed, right? So it's yes. like, I'm immediately, my mind is like, okay, what would I do? It's like, maybe garlic kale is one of the toppings or like sure. what would be like when you have a potato bar like yes that, what well, are people putting on for veggies well we can do well i was gonna say you can make a theme night potato bar too so we might have like a mexican inspired salsa um you know sauteed bell peppers and onions jalapenos which we love grilling jalapenos to give a little heat and a little fun um so you know, a little shredded cheese, if you wish. I think that that Mexican inspired slash other veggies, I would say a lot of times we use like what's left over, whether it's like grilled asparagus or we make a kale salad, like a sauteed kale salad or um, I don't know, it can be broccoli. a Mexican, you know, Italian broccoli. style. Oh, leftover chili. Leftover chili. And broccoli is obviously like, it's like a broccoli cheddar potato kind of sure. thing. Okay, I love that. Here's something you said, and I was like, wait a second. <gasps> grilled jalapenos. Do yes. you grill them love. with the Whole. seeds in them already? Yes, yes. And they are hot, but so good. So, you know, it kind of depends. It's kind of like I, I've experienced. So we go to Mexico a lot, and yes, we I know, enjoy. I know. We love, yes, the golden tone. Thank you. And I'm just w w wishing that we could go there soon. But, um, and so that Mexican influence is a, is a lot. Um, where was I going with this? What did you just ask me that I totally oh, I lost about, my train? I was freaking out about the oh, jalapenos. jalapenos. Cause I jalapenos. love jalapenos so, and, and I, we don't grill them like that. Well, we, we've, it's kind of like a shishito pepper we found yeah. sometimes because sometimes they're very hot and sometimes they're not. Yeah. Um, I like to grill them whole just for ease of use. It's super easy. You can just throw them on the grill. I do scrape, you know, once they're, they're grilled, let them cool and then cut and scrape the seeds. Some of us like more heat than others in our home. Um, but I think that is just the, like the top. It just makes so much flavor and, and brings a little heat and um, makes for a, a fun kind of something else to add on for like a Mexican influenced potato bar. It's ge okay. It's genius. And also so, I can see like cutting it and having it like a one big piece and putting it on like a, a chicken burger or something. Anything. Like yeah. Salmon burger. Yes. Oh my gosh. That, I, 
here's what happened is that Chris was going shopping and I was like, wait, don't go shopping until after the pantry party show because <laughs> maybe it'll be I in some inspiration. Something. Yes, I might need to put something on there. And yes. so here's what here's what's up. Definitely jalapenos are going yes. on my list because yes. both jalapenos sound amazing. And definitely this idea of using up my potatoes as a potato bar and just making sure I have enough stuff that's even random, like you said, leftover. Totally. Stuff. That we can we, shove on it. We it's we fabulous. Yeah, we love like pickled things too. You know, oh, we yeah. I I've recently made um, pickled like homemade pickled red onions, which is again super easy, brainless, and and so that so that sometimes like an add on or or even I don't know um, like pickled jalapenos actually are big big. A big, um, we go through a lot of pickled jalapenos in our house, I, too. I got much so. respect for you and your family about, like, <laughs> ain't no heat sissies over there. Because, no, you know, no, a lot no. of times we say, my dad, I, just, I love him so much, but you give him ketchup. He's like, this is spicy. This is spicy. And you're <laughs> no. like, dad, it's ketchup. <laughs> yeah. We bring everything is spicy. We bring a lot of heat. We bring a lot of heat in this house, which is super fun. I mean, it's I it's. It. I think kids too. They're they're you know they're born with a clean slate. They are they really like suck anything in of what other um, um, you know experiences that people bring that your parent their parents bring them. And it's really interesting that parents that love heat usually have kids that love a little heat too. And so it's 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 pretty funny but so our kids really enjoy a little spice with their I meat i love that coming in yeah. hot coming in hot totally oh, totally at lara field you are just an inspiration i'm very excited about what you've inspired thanks. me to do today now thanks. If people want more of you at lara field or they want more at feed nutrition where can they go what can they do to yes. get more of you well, definitely follow um, at Lara Field is my personal Instagram, and I really try to, you know, feature my kids and feature real world life as a mom and working parent and what I like to experiment with and such. Um, Feed Nutrition, we have a lot at Feed Nutrition is our company page, and we always try to hire, I mean, uh, inspire you with super simple, you know, to prepare, not a lot of work recipes. Um, and then our website is feednutrition.com. That's great. And hey, you know what? Thanks for being a resource for me as well. Like, Thanks. I love knowing, like, when somebody, actually somebody on Instagram uh, over the weekend was like, you know, I have a one-year-old and I'm struggling. What should I do? I was like, at Lara Field. Aw, thanks. <laughs> so, thank um, you. Yeah, so I always think about you. I think you do great work. Thank you thanks. so much for being on the Pantry Party thank Show. You. Inspiration. Thank you. Love this you is girl. awesome. Love, Love you, seeing you. Let's Be well. Soon. Bye. That was another great episode of the Pantry Party Show with at Lara Field. She owns at Feed Nutrition. And we got some great ideas for inspiring us for Pasole. Uh, but also, I feel like, you know, I sort of boss my way around saying, I'm going to have to have that potato bar because I have potatoes in my pantry. So I think that's great. And grilling some jalapenos, great idea. Uh, didn't that just kick off the pantry party week? It's just such a great way. I love it. And I really do think that at Lara Field is uh, a great resource for you. So make sure to follow along with her. And uh, until next time which is tomorrow at noon central time here on my Instagram live. Uh, join me again for pantry party. But until next time, I'm sending you high immunity vibes, big love, and lots and lots of kisses. Bye, guys. Thank you.